Have you ever gone on a trip on a trip that didn't turn out the way you planned? You know, unexpected things, the unpredictable, like the yard sale sign, three yard sale signs, or construction or detours. Well, you know, when I think about the life of Joseph, that's what I think about. How unpredictable the spiritual journey is. We just never know what's around the next bend. And this is a congregation that really knows the story of Joseph. Back in 2007, a lot of you were involved in the production and staging of a wonderful musical about Joseph. And uh, maybe, perhaps, with a show of hands, we can see how many people are here today who are playing any role in that. If you can put your hands up. Now, those of you who don't have your hands up, look around you. You are surrounded by Joseph experts. <laughs> and what really uh, I think is remarkable about the unpredictable journey, spiritual journey of Joseph, was he made a choice throughout to trust God. I want to explore that for a few minutes with you today. Before we do that, the opening bars of the opening song of the music of Joseph. I'd like you to listen to that. Justifiable hurt that he 
have been done to him unjustifiable. I mean, that's miraculous. And letting go, what that means for each of us in our journey can look really different because, you know, our spiritual journeys are all pretty unique. So letting go can mean things like letting go of uh, the need to be right, uh, letting go of uh, a grudge. Um, I think in life, one of the hardest things to let go is not getting the answer to why. Why something happens in our life? Why this diagnosis? Why this tragedy? And like Job, sometimes the letting go is we're never going to get an answer to the why. I invite you just to try something with me for a minute. Take one of your hands, if you like, and form it into a fist and make it really tight, like really squeeze that fist. And just do this for just a few seconds with me. All right. And then very quickly now, just like up. Shake that hand up. Do you feel any, any kind of physical relief from doing that? Does your body kind of go, Oof. Well, I think that's what happens to us when we let go of something. I think we almost get like a spiritual bath for the soul. It's like, oh. In fact, there's a, uh, a wonder ecumenical teacher. He's a, he's a Franciscan priest. His name is Richard Rohr. And recently I read one of his devotionals that that letting go, that's a tool God gives us. So we're not stuck. So we make room for God. And we move forward in our journey. I think that's exactly what Joseph does in this scene. He does one other thing in this scene that's remarkable to me, and that's he trusts God. Because what he does is he does this hindsight analysis, and maybe you've done this with things that have happened to you in your life, where he goes back and he goes, oh my goodness, I'm connecting the dots. God tells Abraham that he will multiply that this phenomenal family, this promise, and it's only going to be possible because I happen to have this job here in Egypt, and because of me, my family's not going to starve to death. Oh my goodness. Now sometimes we can do that, and sometimes we can't connect the dots. And that's okay, because there are many examples in Joseph's life of how he trusted God. And one of my favorite scenes is Pharaoh hears that he can interpret dreams. So Pharaoh calls him out of prison. It's the first time he's standing in front of Pharaoh. And look at the temptation. I mean, even Pharaoh sets up this track for it. Pharaoh says, I hear that you, Joseph, can interpret dreams. Now remember, Joseph's permanent address right now is prison. Don't you think it would have been tempting for, for Joseph to say, Yeah, man, I'm good. I'm really good. That's not all I can do, Pharaoh. I can do a whole bunch of other things, especially if I'm not in prison. <laughs> I can just see that. But he does it. You know what Joseph says to Pharaoh? God will interpret your dreams, Pharaoh, and set your mind at ease. Oh my goodness. Trust God. It's a theme of his life. And it's a great example of the story of Joseph. And it's a great example of the story of the life of Rick. Now, Rick was a TV news cameraman. cameraman. He was a, a wonderful outdoors person. He loved sports. And for him, what that meant were things like archery and boating and fishing and wrestling. He had a real zest for life. Later on in his life, he had a very serious motorcycle accident. And in a surgery that followed that accident, the surgeon made a mistake. And his mobility was forever compromised. Rick moved from Philadelphia's home to be with his sister and close to her family in Tucson. And for the next 11 years, he enjoyed the, 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 a chance to develop more intimate relationships, the love of that family. He found a church he loved, and when he felt healthy enough, he would go to church. He loved his pastor. I remember sitting across the table from a Bible study and our minister would say something and he'd look at her and he'd go, Pastor Marilyn, you're grown up. Rick left us to join us out in the on Christmas of last year. His sister wrote in his obituary, even with major life changes, 
Rick never lost his faith. You know what? Rick really inspires me. He still does. And I'm guessing that perhaps you know people like Rick that really inspire you, that have this really unpredictable journey, spiritual journey, and yet they just continue to trust God. And so I want to encourage you today that if you have those moments, those detours, those constructions, unplanned things on your spiritual journey, and you need a little encouragement, I suggest you just open your Bible and go back to the story of Joseph.